Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com, and I want to quickly show you how to use Java's printf function to format doubles. I'm going to create a new class here. I'll call it format doubles, and I'm going to add the all-important main method, and I'm going to show you the problem that we have when we try and format floating point numbers without using Java's printf function. So let's say I want to do a system.out.println here and say I love pi a lot. Well, all this is going to work. This should print out without a problem if I run it. And you can see it says I love 3.14 a lot. You can even see I've got a little, you know, even formatting problem here. This just underlies the problem with kind of putting something that needs to be formatted a number inside of a text string. So how do we fix that? Well, we use Java's println function. We say system.out.printf. I said println, I mean printf. And you say, I love percentage f a lot. That is your formatable text string. And then as the argument, you just put in math.py. And now all of a sudden we have a formatted text string. The math.py value is going to be pushed in where the percentage f is. And if I comment out the first line here, I say run as a Java application and boom, we get the I love 3.14 a lot, but it's all achieved by using the percentage f specifier, not by having to do concatenation. You'll also notice that uh, the value there is specified to one, two, three, four, five, six decimal points, a total of an eight character width for the number, a little bit easier to work with than with the 15 characters that you get when you just do a concatenation. Now, there are options to improve this. So for example, I could say decimal three here, run this as a Java application, and you'll see the output goes to only three decimal points. In fact, you could get really crazy here, and you could do something like double I love pi, and make that equal to 999 times math.py, and maybe even multiply that by minus one, and then we could say system.println I love pi. Now we're doing it with a variable. And you'll see that now we get the full number here, but it would be nice if we maybe added a, a thousand spacer or even specified the width. So you can put a comma in here. And if you do that, well, you'll get the thousands character spacing, the thousandth grouping in the code. Um, you can even specify a width. So I might want to say, well, you know, I actually want to make sure that the whole thing is 10 characters long. And now if I go run as a Java application, well, I'll get an output to 10 characters long, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That all looks good. Um, I can also specify to 12 characters and force zero spacing. So I can say run as a Java application. Now we'll actually get 10, 12 characters printed out. Let me see if that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve characters in total. And for the overflow, for the extra spots there, this zero forces zero based padding. So for example, if I took that out and ran this again, Notice that we wouldn't get the zero space padding, but we would get the character being inserted at 12 characters in total length. So anyways, there you go. That is the ups and downs and the ins and outs of doing formatting of a floating point number, in this case, a double in Java. And uh, by the way, if you wanted to, you could just do a, a float as well. So you could do float sum equals 99, 88.88 and then over here say sum make sure that this is a floating point number and there you go this would actually work for a floating point number as well boy i do not like that forcing the width of the character i'm going to change that 
And there you go. I love 88 a lot. Um, well, we're all big fans of Eric Lindros, um, but uh, I like that formatting even better. Anyways, there you go. Those are the ins and outs of using the Java printf function to format a floating point number. If you enjoy this tutorial, head over to the serverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials on Java microservices development, Git, DevOps, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And finally, why don't you subscribe on the YouTube?